In this video, we will go from this to this. Hello, I'm Asfaldas and today we are going to update our Squid Game JavaScript game to be more mobile friendly. You know, to give that more immersed experience. We will make it installable and work even without the internet connection. By the way, if you haven't seen the original video where we built this game, I will leave a link to that video up here. Now you might be thinking, but how we are going to make it installable and work without the internet? And the answer is simple. We'll make our game to be a PWA, which stands for a progressive web app. We are not going to dig very deep into the PWA topic itself, as I think it can be a totally separate video on its own. But to put it simply, PWAs are websites that took all the right vitamins. In our case, it will allow users to install the game and feel more like an actual app than a website. It will also enable our game to be offline capable by caching the static assets. The first step was to deploy this game to Firebase. You can check this video on how to do that. Now to make it a PWA, we need two things. Manifest.json and the service worker. The web app manifest is a JSON file that tells the browser about your progressive web app and how it should behave when installed on the user's desktop or mobile device. In our manifest, we define our app name and the short name. Start URL tells the browser where your application should start when it is launched. The background color property is used on the splash screen when the application is first launched on mobile. The theme color is a hint from your web page that tells the browser what color to tint UI elements such as the address bar. The orientation property is used to force orientation on your web page, landscape or portrait. I wanted the game to be in a landscape mode only, unfortunately it's not supported by Safari on iOS, therefore we will need to make some extra changes in our game to work around that. Display property lets you customize what browser UI is shown when your app is launched. We will use standalone as it will hide the address bar. Finally, within the icons property you can define a set of icons for the browser to use on the home screen, app launcher, splash screen and so on when a user installs your PWA. For that we can use PWA Asset Generator CLI tool it automates PWA asset generation and image declaration, automatically generates icon and splash screen images, updates manifest.json and index.html files with the generated images according to web app manifest specs and Apple human interface guidelines. The second step is to register a service worker. Create a service worker file and register it in main.js. For the service worker itself, we will use workbooks library by Google that bakes in a set of best practices and removes the boilerplate every developer writes when working with service workers. We will use standard caching strategies from workbooks recipes which will take care of JavaScript, CSS and other static resources caching. By default, our FBX 3D models won't be cached. So let's add an additional caching route for them. Call register route from workbooks routing with two parameters. The first one is URL regex to match. Our models are saved under resources models. The second one is caching strategy to use. Let's use cache first, which basically means that when the app requests the FBX model, it will first check the cache and fetch from the network only if not found. That is basically all we need to make our game a PWA. Now the users will be able to install the game and play it offline, but we still have a few problems to solve. The first one is touch controls, as we currently support only keyboard events. To fix that, all we have to do is pass 3GS renderer to our third person controls class. Attach touch start, touch move and touch end event listeners to renderer DOM element. On touch start we simply save the coordinate from the event. On touch move event we check the direction the user wants to go by comparing the new coordinate with the one we saved in touch start and set the forward or backward movement values to an input object respectively. Finally, on touch end, we simply reset the start coordinate and reset the input values. Now the user will be able to move the character using touch events, simple as that. Next problem on the list, inability to force landscape mode for iOS devices as mentioned earlier. We had a handle resize function which updates the camera projection matrix and renderer size according to window size. We will modify this function a bit by saving an initial aspect value in our Squid Game constructor 
and compare the new aspect to an old one. If it does not match, we will update the camera and renderer. Also, instead of calling this function only once on finished loading, we will call it on each animation frame, that way the resize will be handled properly whenever user switches from portrait to landscape or vice versa. The last problem to solve is the restart button. When playing offline, window.location.reload messes up the caching for some reason, so we can change it by assigning the current URL to window.location.hash that is it. We have our Squid Game JavaScript game fully functional as a PWA. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Also, I will leave the link to the GitHub repo in the video description. I hope you found this video useful. If you are not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We would love to have you on board. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.